Hello guys, I thought I'd give you a really short introduction to how to make scripts for Photoshop. I don't really have any secrets as many of you know, and a lot of coders keep this stuff secret because they are very protective. I like to share my knowledge. Um, to get started with the scripting in Photoshop, you would need though some kind of base knowledge in JavaScript. And uh, you can find that really easily online. Um, my preferred editor to do the scripts is uh, Sublime Text because it has, uh, you can run scripts directly into Photoshop from here really easily and it's fast um, in launching and all that stuff. There's also the extend script toolkit where you can download from Adobe Creative Cloud. And what you do then is you select your Photoshop and then you write your code here. So for example, I have write um, dollar dot write ln right line to load debugger. And if I run this, you can see it adds hello debugger at the end. This is just a console, so to speak. You don't get the console in the Sublime, but I still prefer Sublime because it's easy and then I just alert or or uh, take care of the values. So what you should start with is going to this page. It's Adobe DevNet Photoshop Scripting. And here you have a scripting guide. I can close this too. So scripting guide and JavaScript reference. So these documents explain how to do the coding and what you can do. Like the hierarchy, it's application, and then you have document, and then selection channel, blah, 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 blah. Um, this API is very limited, but you can do a lot more if you create uh, these objects that you send into Photoshop. I'll show this shortly. But this is a good start. So for example, and here's the um, properties for the JavaScript of, uh, reference. So for example, document, let's find it. So application has an active document and the active document um, it's of value type document. So if I go to document here, I can see all the properties. So one of them is width, like so. And it returns unit value. So if I just alert app active document width, and since I have installed, so I can run directly from here, I just press control B and it alerts how wide this document is. So if I want to code with this, I could have if uh, it's, it's more than 2000 pixels. Yes, it is. And then save and I run it again. And yes, it is. So then I can have different code depending on width or wherever. Um, just as a simple example. Uh, you want to name your files .gsx. That's JavaScript extended script. Uh, extend script. Uh, you can of course do the exact same thing in uh, this editor if you want to but I find it's really not a good editor at all. Um, Adobe is also coming out soon with uh, Visual Studio Code extension, but it's a bit buggy right now, so it doesn't show the debug and sometimes you have to restart it and all that. So I'm still using Sublime Edit. And to get that to work, you need to go to 
um, this guy who created a package. His name is David uh, Baranka. He's really good with uh, a lot of stuff. And uh, download this package and install it into your uh, Sublime Edit. I made some tweaks to mine because I found some bugs. So I can show you. So this is what the um, uh, build looks like. This is my run script. And this is the other run script. Um, so for now I have CC 2017. I, you just edit this if you have something else. Uh, another good thing to have. Um, which is. Uh, which will record everything that Photoshop does. Um, it's the script listener plugin. If you install this into your Photoshop, there will be a file created on your desktop that's called script listener. And this lists everything that uh, Photoshop does. So let's just clear it and do something. So if I image, if I change the size, just as an example, like so, and I go back here, you can see this code here is very hard to read. And this is the objects that you need to create if you want to work outside of the API. And working outside of the API is often faster because it access directly into Photoshop. I found the API sometimes quite slow, especially if you're looping through layers and stuff like that. Um, let's go back to resources. So once you get started, there's a very good community on Photoshop scripting, which is forumsadobe.com, community, Photoshop, Photoshop scripting and content. Here you can find a lot of help and also pre-made scripts. There's also an old web page um, where people are helping out a lot with scripting and there's pre-made scripts here. It's called uh, ps-scripts.com. Uh, you have to register to be able to get in here. Um, so there's also a very nice tool made by some guy. Let me see if I can find his name. Uh, Thomas Sinkunas. Thomas Sinkunas or something like that. Uh, this script is really good if you want to clean up. So if I want to clean up this code because it's quite messy. Have it more readable. I can open the clean uh, and run it into Photoshop. No, I want to run it in Photoshop. And then I paste clean code. And this code that comes out here is quite clean. If I go back to my test. You can see here, it's, it's much easier to read and it has like, it creates the function automatically and all that stuff. So, and now I'm missing one of these, but. So if I wanted to resize the image to 300, if the width is bigger than 2000, just an example. I hope I'm not losing everyone right now, but just follow along and make notes of the websites that I showed you. They are really good in. Uh, so let's undo this. If I now run this script, uh, let's just make alert. And run it. It says size is bigger than 2000. I'm about to resize to 300. And I run it. And it does it. Okay. 
So the script listener is really good to see what Photoshop does. There's a lot of junk code in here though, so I recommend just cleaning it and saving <laughs> before you do your stuff. Um, there's also a nice script in Xtools. So Xtools is a bundle with a lot of stuff. And it's very overwhelming, but it has a couple of cool things that I know a lot of people use to hide their actions, which is sort of a scumbag thing, but anyway. So what you can do is you open the action to JavaScript file that comes in the Xtools, you run it, and you have to stop. You have to run it in Photoshop. So Photoshop, run. Then you select the action. So I don't know which action we should convert actually. Let's try the folder setup just to, and let's put it in scripting. Save. Now, if I go back here, the open folder setup, this is the code that it created and it's really messy, but it's a good thing to know. I don't use this much because I'm, I prefer to just look at the script log and create my own functions, but it's a good shortcut if you want to just get started because this stuff can get really messy and it's, it's hard to read. Uh, it's a good thing to know though. And so let's see if I missed anything. Yeah. So, and there's also this website which has all the APIs, so it's easy to search. I like this website a lot. So if I'm looking for uh, layer set, maybe if I want to loop layers, so it can have document layer sets and it's a, uh, and then you have all the properties and it's an array. So you loop the array if you want to look at that stuff and each, uh, like art layer is the base. If you find an art layer, you have all these methods. You can remove it, copy it, merge, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and that's basically it for a short introduction. I think, um, there was a lot of information here. So go back to it. Uh, this website really good quick search. You also have the same stuff in these API documents, but it's it's hard to find stuff. And same here in the um, JavaScript document. You download this from this page, scripting guide. Um, the script listener plugin, you it's it's listed here how you install it. And once you have it installed, it will create the script listener log on your desktop that just records everything you do in Photoshop. And then you can clean it with the script, which I think is really handy. Um, and that script you would find here, bitbucket render tom clean slash SL S -S SRC master, and then you just download it and then you open it. These scripts, um, I always run from the extend uh, script because they, um, they look for paths and stuff that's not very compatible with the sublime. Um, but that's basically it. If you want to protect this script. So if I have this script here, let's make and then, then I would go to export as binary. And then as you can see, it saves as JSX bin. Let's put it in the somewhere good. I don't know. It doesn't really matter, I guess. Just to 
desktop scripting saved. If you look at what this is now, there's there's a few more steps you should take if you're really particular about your code. But this is what the scramble script looked like. And um, if you really wanna, like this is not too hard to decompile actually. So, but I can't, it's a lot of steps, but basically you would run it through another parser before you compile it and then you make it safe. But this, just know that this code is not 100% safe. It's quite easy to decompile. Um, what else? Yeah, just get started and test some stuff. Um, I guess it's easier to test not the stuff that the script listener puts out because that's really complex. But go to the forums. Go download these reference files, look at them, look at the API. If you don't know JavaScript, you need to learn a bit about that first. This site's really good. Register here and check what other people are creating. Uh, here's also a good website. Um, and this one I really like as well because you can search so easily and just click everything. It's, uh... So I think that's all I want to show you in a quick little overview how to code. It isn't easy. Photoshop hasn't made it easy and you're going to struggle a lot because there's many things that doesn't work the way the documentation says so you have to find workarounds and finding workarounds requires quite a bit of knowledge of photoshop and coding but just to get your feet wet like i mean you can convert your actions and then maybe add a little bit of logic to it that's not too difficult um yeah and ask me if you have any questions and let me know if you would like me to do a proper tutorial that would be probably a few hours long and uh, i'll do it it will have to cost some money though because i my time is valuable but not too much so let me know what you think and if it's confusing just watched this several times i went quite fast because i just wanted to go through my how i do it and um, then all you need to do for for this script to work in um, in the toolkit so if i want to place this test gsx script in the toolkit i would just place it into you know the app data folder that you can find in the configurator so let me show you so in settings here this is the app data folder and you should be able to open it and then you have scripts if you place any scripts here so and then go to command and load it will update and put it here and then you can link it to a button but make sure it's named uh, dot gsx or dot gsx bin otherwise it's not gonna work so enjoy i'll post the links all of this stuff below this video so you can have a look And we'll take it from there. Enjoy.